In today's video, we're gonna learn everything we can do when it comes to ChatGPT and PDFs. To show you optimally how to leverage this tool in ChatGPT, I'm gonna give you four different types of PDFs. The first PDF will be a research study. The second PDF is gonna be an image-based PDF. What's even better is this is gonna be a house plan. So we're gonna be able to internalize this data, understand this data, and ask questions about all this different stuff when it comes to this house. The third PDF is gonna be an income statement from a business. We're gonna show you how to take this chart, put it into ChatGPT, start asking questions about it, and a bunch of other stuff. And finally, the last PDF we're gonna do together is gonna to be the pitch deck from Airbnb. Let's jump into today's video. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, we're gonna learn everything you can do when it comes to ChatGPT and PDF analysis. Let's start off today's video with a nice little freebie. And that freebie is gonna be a GBT I personally made that you can get access to right now in the description down below that is specialized for PDF analysis. So let's come down to research and analysis. Once we are here, we're gonna open up here and it's gonna be the PDF reader. Other GBTs that are specialized for PDF analysis are going to charge you money. But don't worry, I made this for free. This is gonna help you out a lot. Let's go ahead and start this chat. You can click the link down below to begin your chat as well. Start chat. Now, in order to get started here, all we're gonna do is simply click this paperclip and ChatGPT actually got a new update here that allows us to integrate Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. If you're interested in learning how to connect this, but also disconnect this, check out that video right there. It's only four minutes long. Gives you a complete idea of what this new feature can do. But today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and add my file from Google Drive. Alternatively, you can upload it from your computer. Add from Google Drive. Now that I'm in Google Drive, I'm gonna go ahead and choose our first test sample here, which is gonna be a research paper. Simply double click or upload. Here we go. For reference, and ironically, this paper has to do with the dangers of artificial intelligence. Going through this research paper, there is a lot of text we'd have to read through to find specific data points or relevant information we would care about. Back then, we would probably use a command F and we probably still will use that, but let's go and learn how we can go ahead and leverage ChatGPT in this context. Real quickly to confirm that it's actually reading the correct data and it isn't just making up stuff, let's ask a very specific question. I'm gonna go and copy section five here. Tools for controlling use of AI. Coming over here, I'm gonna say, what are the semicolon tools for controlling use of AI? Corbin, why are you doing this? This is to ensure that we're not going like down the rabbit hole, it's making up stuff. Let's just first confirm that it's reading the correct data it's not making up stuff. So we got five different points here. Regulations, ethical, auditing, collaborative, education. Let's see. Regulations, ethical, auditing, collaborative, education. Pass the first test. Now that we know that's reading the correct data, we can basically ask whatever we want. First major thing for you to understand, you never have to attach the file again within the same chat. It's gonna contextualize it, it's gonna understand it and proceed in that manner. Therefore, if I have this research paper and let's say I wanna create a thesis, all we have to do is simply ask, create a thesis. Create a thesis on the largest negative impact of AI. Hit enter. From this, it went above and beyond. So it gave me the thesis, the introduction, and the relevant points to back up the relevant thesis. Now, what is super cool and I think is the most prevalent use case when doing research papers is finding very specific dictation for quotes. So for example, we have a section here talking about lack of transparency. Let's ask for a very specific quote from this section. Coming back over here, I'm gonna say, can you give me a quote for semicolon lack of transparency? Now the quote it gave is pretty long, honestly too long, so I'm gonna say shorter. Let's see if this is actually true and if I'm the right information. So we're gonna go and copy this, Command F. I told you Command F will come back. And there you go, keep that in mind. It actually wasn't exact dictation. So we have to actually identify that when proctoring ChatGPT. Let's come back. We need a quote that is the exact dictation. So keep this in mind. This is what we're talking about when we're using these language models. And sometimes it can go a little crazy and not you know, follow our directions to a T. To be fair, I didn't ask for exact dictation, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Now I followed the directions perfectly. We got our quote here. When AI models make decisions that impact people's lives, it is important for these decisions to be explainable and transparent. Perfect, let's go ahead and do PDF number two when it comes to image analysis in the specific context of checking out a house. New chat. This one's pretty cool as I remember early on, about a year ago, I was making a video similar to this, obviously an older model. And one of the comments I received was very specific to floor plans and whether ChatGPT could leverage this yet. At the time, the answer was no. At the time, ChatGPT could only read metadata within the image, not the actual image itself. That's changed. And now ChatGPT can actually see these images or sketches, sketches, images, same thing. Let's go ahead and add this attachment. House floor plans. Select. Now that we know we can actually look at these images, which is kind of creepy, we're going to go ahead and ask how would it improve the floor plan for the first floor? How would you improve the floor plan for the first floor? And that is not how you spell improve, but it'll be able to understand. Analyzing. 
for context, this is the first floor. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to use a PDF, you could always screenshot or just basically upload an image of it, like of the very specific parts. But we're going to go ahead and upload this entire file here, see if it understands it, and give us a good answer. Okay, we got a very interesting output here. This is really cool. So the first output here doesn't really make sense, but when you switch it to a static chart, you can kind of see what it's trying to do here. This is all early days still. I'm gonna go ahead and put these side by side real quick. So we have these side by side now. Notice how it wants to really move around the directions of these different you know, sections of the house itself. So let's go ahead and look at some of his plans here. Living room and kitchen. Ensure that the living room and kitchen are adjacent to create an open concept layout, which is more conducive to modern living and entertaining. All right, let's see what it's talking about here. So we got kitchen and living room kitchen and living room so we kind of already have that there okay this is interesting y'all so this isn't like a perfect output but it just shows you where it's going it's really trying to do something here but it's still like failing at you know very fundamental stuff with making it clear right like we still need kind of more of a sketch let's go ahead and try something here we're gonna say look at both floors and give me the new sketch or the layouts hit enter a lot of times with these outputs, I was expecting just a text-based output, but that graph was actually pretty cool as it shows you the direction this is going. This is a little bit better of an output here. So we have our first floor and what it's doing is it's basically using these as the markers and then telling you where to orientate. You could probably further proctor this. Now it's obviously not perfect as it's still referencing the first floor here, but what you can do in this context, and let me go ahead and help you out here, is if you're getting outputs like this that aren't 100% reliable, do the screenshot method. So in this context, I'm gonna go ahead and just screenshot this. I'm gonna go ahead and screenshot this one as well. So sometimes when you're dealing with PDFs and the data associated with it, probably when you're dealing with more complex PDFs like this one, you kind of want to probably compartmentalize and get specific data points that are more relevant and then ask questions there. So what I'm gonna say here is I'm gonna simply put, okay, I am going to give you an image of the first and second floor. Please redo output based on that. Add it. In my videos, I like showing errors and I like showing how I troubleshoot them because I think that helps you as a user when you're going through this, everything's not perfect. Everything's not cookie cutter, especially in the early days. So now you understand a nice little tip here when it comes to data extraction. Let's see if this works though. <laughs> Hit enter. We are analyzing. First thing I wanna notate is that interactive charts like this are not supported yet, but it seems like in the future they will be. So let's go ahead and look at some of the optimization. So one part is for the second floor plan to centralize the storage section a little bit more. Now, what I'm curious about, is it able to redraw this? I highly doubt it. Let's try. Can you redraw the plan? All right, so here's an attempt to redraw it all early days, y'all. But look at that. So if we come over to the first floor here, we can see that it wants the bedroom on the left, the storage below that, the laundry on the bottom right, the living room, the kitchen. And then if you come over to the improved second floor plan, it's coming the bedroom three, storage to the right, bedroom four. You know, it's kind of proceeding in that manner. This is all early days. And honestly, if I added custom instructions, it'd probably be a little bit better. So check out that video to see how you can leverage custom instructions in this kind of context. But let's go and jump over to the next data point or PDF. Quick tip here, when dealing with outputs from ChatGPT that are very custom like this, you can actually use this expand tab here and then ask questions specific to what it just outputted. You can in theory do this within the chat as well, but that just makes it more laser in, in that context. Let's look at PDF number three, which is gonna be a chart that's found within a PDF. Let's go ahead and add it here. Once we have it added for this kind of PDF, I think the most relevant thing is extracting the actual data table. Extract the data table from this PDF. Hit enter. We're gonna go ahead and make sure to gut check this when it comes to the numbers, such as the net income loss is 33 for 2003 and 41 for 2004. And here we go. So this is actually everything we would want here. So let's go ahead and gut check this. Looking at that very specific row we just saw here, we got 33,672, 33,672, and then finally 41,707. Same number there as well. So that actually shows that the relevant data from that PDF is correct. Let's take it one step further here and have it combine this data into a downloadable CSV. Please combine the data so I can download. And we're actually gonna show you something else that's pretty cool. Here we go. In order to expand it to confirm that it's correct, we can hit that, scroll through here. And then finally, when we wanna download it, we simply hit the download table. Now, one thing you'll also notice is this nice little chat bot on the side for this specific data we just extracted. If you wanna see a whole video dedicated to that, I did it a couple of days ago. You can check it out right there. It's showing you how to deal with CSVs, Excel sheets, Google spreadsheets, everything above the board in that manner. Therefore, if you really want to know how to leverage that specific context when it comes to this tool, check out that video. Let's look at the last PDF here, which is a pitch deck from Airbnb. Let's go ahead and attach the file. Once we have it attached, let's ask a very simple question here and just see what its value proposition is right off the bat. What is your value proposition? Okay, boom. 
From that pitch tech, we were able to get the value proposition, which is cost savings for travelers, income generation for hosts, cultural exchange, and local connections. And from the pitch tech, we got it. Save money, make money, share culture. Now we can take this one step further here. So rather than looking for very specific data points, let's actually ask for analysis. So let's just ask a question. Do you think this is a good idea to invest in? Let's actually see what ChatGPT says. <laughs> and it took the right side. So it said it's a good idea based on several reasons, such as market demand, scalability, revenue model, competitive advantages, the list goes on. But the idea here is that when you're dealing with data like this, you can go ahead and actually do analysis on the data rather than just using it as like a, where is the data found? Here's the data, use it. Alternatively, we can actually get insight on everything that we read when reading these PDFs. Now to curiosity, let's see how much ChatGPT would invest. How much would you invest? Give me an exact number. It might not give me an exact number here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure it does. See, it's trying not to give me an exact number here. No, 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 no. We're gonna say no. Tell me a number now. Still trying to justify it, still trying to get around it, but it said they would probably invest 10,000. Okay, that covers a lot of we can do when it comes to ChatGPT and the PDF ability. Make sure to check out the GBT. I'm gonna leave in the description down below. It's completely free and it should give you better answers when handling ChatGPT in this context. Make sure you leave a like if you found value in today's video. I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here going over everything you need to know when it comes to ChatGPT and I'll see you in the next video. That's the playlist I was referring to when it comes to ChatGPT and how to start leveraging it. That video right there, I'm going to make the Excel video I referenced earlier in the video when it comes to ChatGPT and Excel sheets and CSV sheets. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.